Okay, so uh, let's do this. Now, if you don't, if you already heard it and you don't want to listen, get out. Okay. Otherwise, be quiet, please. Okay. Let me just go through this quick. Uh, go through this uh, quickly and nicely. So we said that an array is essentially an array of characters, an array of bytes. Starts from zero, goes up to the amount of the size of the memory that you have in your computer. Therefore, the address starts from zero and goes up to whatever you have. So the address is essentially the index of the byte or character that you have in memory. Now, whenever you are requesting for a, for a variable, what the OS is, uh, compiler is doing is requesting OS to give you a piece of memory and tag it with the name that you indicate in your variable declaration. Therefore, you're going to have var over there. And so if you say int var, it allocates the enough memory for that, and that becomes your integer. Doing so, you can get another type of variable. Depending on what is the size of the variable, that is the amount of memory that is going to be allocated, and you've got to have, it, have a tag that is the name of the variable. These variables can pop up anywhere. The addresses of this variable, for example, that variable if var over there sitting is sitting as at, at address 108. Okay? The next time you run it, it's not going to be there. It's going to jump somewhere else. Okay? The same thing dvar. dvar is address 132. When you rerun the program, it's going to jump somewhere else. Now, when you set a variable to a value using the tag, the name, the value will actually get injected in where your variable is in memory. And because it knows it's an integer, it puts it exactly the size of an integer. And the same thing happens for a, for a double. So when you actually set the double to a variable, to a value, it injects it into the variable. Now, knowing that, let's go back. We need to be able to handle, uh, we need to be able to access our variables using its address. To do that, we need to design a new type, a new type of integer that we call a pointer. So pointer is essentially an integer whose job is to keep the address of other variables. Therefore, we can call it a pointer. So pointer PTR is an integer. Because it's an integer, it's going to take four bytes. Like any other variable, it's going to be somewhere in memory, and it's going to be tagged with the variable name that you have. You can set that to a value like an irregular integer. So you can say PTR is 102, and 102 is going to get injected into PTR. But because we are using a pointer to access certain piece of memory, if I just put a random number over there, what's going to happen is that your variable, your pointer, is going to point to somewhere in memory where you don't have anything yet, which means it's not yours. If you use that pointer to access that, your program is going to crash. The operating system is going to stop you, not the compiler. Compiler doesn't know that. Compiler composite, life is beautiful. As, as soon as you run the program, because you're accessing somewhere that doesn't belong to you, the program is going to crash. Therefore, the value that we put over there should be the value, the, the, the address in which I have something of my own. So if I put 108 over there, I am fine, because that's mine. But you have written a program. When you write int a, you just know you have an integer. The name is a. You don't know where in memory that is. We said for that, we have an address of operator. So instead of manually writing the address, which is impossible, I don't know where it is, I drew it. That's why I know it's 108. When you write a program, you don't know where it is. Because of that, you actually put address of a variable. So it actually extracts the address and puts it in the pointer. Therefore, pointer is pointing to it. Now that the pointer is pointing to the variable, I can use that pointer to access the variable. Why do I want to do this? Because I want to be able to access, we are, because I want to be able to access things remotely. What do I mean? You know what functions are, right? You know if I create a variable inside a function, that variable is not visible to any other function, correct? It's impossible. 
if you are in main, you are calling a function, you go to that function, the variables in main are not accessible to that function, right? We could simply pass the addresses of those variables into the functions so the functions can remotely access variables that they are not in their scope. So it's a very good and useful thing. At this moment, I can't demonstrate that to you, but I'm just letting you know this is not just a waste of time. It, it, the pointers are really helpful. Okay, so now that I have the, the address of a variable over there inside the pointer, I can actually mention I want target of the pointer to be set to 234. By doing that, by actually saying that target of PTR is 234, it's not going to deal with the pointer itself. It's going to deal with the place that the pointer is pointing to. In this case, it's address 108, which is essentially the variable va. Therefore, the variable will be, the value will be injected over there. Okay? And then if I access the variable, try to print it, of course, the value that I just injected is going to get printed. And also, I can access the variable in another way, using the target of PTR. So if I say print target of PTR, it's just another way to access the variable, and the outcome is going to be the same. But if I print the pointer itself, I am not printing the target. I am not printing any the destination. I'm saying, what is the address inside you? Doing that, I'm going to get the actual address in which the variable is sitting at. OK? Are we OK with this? I put, I'm going to put this presentation, this PowerPoint, in GitHub. So you don't need to take pictures of the, it, the, the, the PowerPoint will be on GitHub. You can actually access it. All right? Now, having this, let's see if I can do the same thing with a double pointer. So I'm saying PTR, that is the pointer that I created. Now let's put the address of the double in it, which is 132, correct? Now doing so, I'm going to say I want to put the value that is a double value inside where PTR is pointed. Is that possible? Actually, it is not. The thing I designed is not good. How can compiler detect what is the target of PTR? What is the type, type of the target of PTR only from this expression, target of PTR? There's absolutely no way. PTR, a regular pointer, right? Two seconds ago, I set four bytes. Now I'm requesting you to put eight bytes. How does it know what is the size of the target? It has no access to that data. All it has is number 132. How does it know if at 132 it's an integer, character, short integer, double? It doesn't know. Because of this fact, this design is not good. It is not going to work. I have to have a better design. So I got to go back in my to my design. Instead of having just a pointer PTR, I have to tell what type of a pointer it is, which means it is not only a pointer, but it points to a specific type of thing that is, in this case, an integer. Now, PTR is specifically designed to hold the address, which essentially is a number, but what is sitting at the target is an integer, and nothing but an integer. Therefore, I can actually, I can actually set the value to 345, 2345, that is an integer, and compiler knows how much space at the target it's needed because it is an integer pointer, not just a pointer. And because of that, all the things that I have done will actually work. Now, if I want to do the same to into a double pointer, I, for, the, for the double variable, I cannot use the PTR that I had. I have to create a new pointer for the double. The size is the same. It's four bytes because address is an address. It doesn't make any difference. But in this one, I'm saying this is a double pointer, which means this address that is an integer like the other one is now pointing to a double in memory, not to an integer. So the compiler knows that the DPTR that I have, if I want to put something, I have to put it in 8 bytes in the memory. Therefore, the setting of that 
will be just fine and it can point to it properly and when I actually set the target it's going to actually set the value properly and all the actions that I have will take place perfectly for it which means if I access the double I will see that it's changed because the target of uh, DPTR is, is set. I can access it exactly like the other one using the uh, the DPR, DPTR pointer and if I print the DPTR by itself I will see that the where the double value is sitting at and that essentially is pointers and nothing else okay so that's how the pointers are designed and now if we go back to what we have done in class already If I go back to the notes that is here, it's not there actually, I'm going to bring it up in a second. Okay, give it a second, it's loading it. All right, now if I go back to what we have done, fake pointer, we have done exactly the same. So I said int type pointer and I've written exactly the same thing. And you all saw it worked perfectly, right? And then I said I faked it and as a matter of fact, those, those things don't exist at all. When I look at this, I'll see that pointer is actually an asterisk. Address of, you already know, it's an ampersand. And target of is an asterisk too. So if I actually look at the real pointers, int pointers, this is what it's going to look, look like. So integer asterisk means integer pointer. Ampersand var means address of var. And asterisk PTR means target of PTR. Say it properly. I already mentioned how do we detect what an asterisk means. We said that if you look at an asterisk and it makes sense, it's multiplication. It means A multiplied by B. If you have an asterisk and at left side you have a, a type, any kind of type, it could be a student pointer PTR. Okay, sorry struct. It could be struct student pointer PTR, which means pointer points to a structure. You can do that, no problem. Okay? So if you have a type at left side, any type, that asterisk belongs to that, and it means that the pointer to that type, integer pointer, struct student pointer. If the pointers that you, if the asterisks that you have don't make sense, that means target of. So whenever you see the asterisk doesn't make sense, say target of A is set to target of B multiplied by target of C, which means if you go top in your program, you will see that someplace you have B defined as a pointer and you have C defined as a pointer. And that is the end of story about pointers. That's the basic of pointers. And using this capability, to be able to hold an address of something, you can do wonders. We'll come up to it soon when we're going to see pointers and functions acting together. And it's going to make lots of powerful stuff that we're going to work with. That's it. Any questions about pointers? I have a question for you. Would you be available for Skype during your break? I would say send me an email. Yeah. I'll try to. I'll be out of the country, but I have internet over there. No, no, you can do that, no problem. Okay. Yeah, but just you have to send me an email so I'm available. But sure. Let me stop the recording. Let me stop the recording. <laughs>